Hi there, I'm back from England with my booty haul and I'm here in Melbourne in my hometown but I can't stay here and chat all day I've got to get some restorations done so follow me Whilst in England I met up with Dean Bedell This is him with his electric bike Dean was very generous by donating a lot of vehicles to me for my restoration channel One of them he found whilst digging up a rat nest in his back garden He even knew the name of the child that lost it It was Rupert Lamb who lived in the house 40 years ago. This car had been buried in the ground for 30 years. So having a look at this model you can see it is in a disgusting state. It is covered in dirt, corrosion, there's not much paint on it. It's got no wheels on it and some of the hubs are broken. The tipper tray is heavily oxidized. The axles are rusted and seized in their bearings. And underneath the tray there's another load of dirt that needs to be cleaned out before I can even start on this. So first up I'm going to give this baby a bath in my laundry sink. I'm using lukewarm water here and a, I think it might be a brush that's used to clean dentures, I'm not too sure. Well that's revealed some of the colour of the paint anyway. I thought this was a brown truck, it had that much dirt on it. Keep flushing it and rubbing it and brushing it and flushing it. Doesn't really seem to be doing much. Oh look, just by washing it one of the wheels disintegrated. That's not a good sign. Okay, this looks better. Well, I suppose it does really, but it still doesn't look very good. Looking at it now I can see that uh, those axles are never going to come out. I'm going to have to cut those off with some kind of grinder, I think. In my last video, some of my subscribers recommended I use Coca-Cola to strip the rust off models. So I tried it and it didn't work. So then afterwards, a lot of people in the comments said, I should have used white vinegar. Well, silly me. So this time I'm going to use white vinegar and hopefully get all this rust off this rusty model. Let's see how long it takes. I'll leave my watch here so you can see what the time is. Next morning I wake up early. I'm keen to see what this model looks like rust free. It's been sitting, it's been sitting in the vinegar all night long. So I'm hoping I can see some results. So this model has been in this bath now for 16 hours. Let's take it out and see what it looks like. Oh, it looks exactly the same as it did when I put it in. It doesn't seem to have taken any rust off at all. Not one iota. Oh well, I've got nothing to lose. I'll put it back in for a little longer. Well, I'm gonna leave the rust alone for the time being. Instead, I'm gonna take the base off. Before I do that, I'm going to tap this rivet hole so I can put a little screw in there when I put it back together. To tap the hole, I'm going to drill a hole first with this 1.4 millimeter drill. Then I'm going to use this tap with a flat tip to cut the threads in the hole. You can see another tap has a pointy tip. The flat one goes in deeper, which is better to get a longer screw in. These are the lengths of the screws I use. Sometimes I have to cut them in half to make them fit. They are 2M button headed Allen screws. To accurately and safely drill the holes, I recommend holding the model in a small hobby vise. I've wrapped some tape around this drill, so I have a guide as to how deep I'm going with it. I don't want to go all the way through the model. Once I've drilled the hole for the screw thread, I'm now removing the head of the rivet. Unfortunately, I used the wrong size drill, so I had to re-drill it using a slightly larger one. After the head of the rivet has been drilled out, I use a small flat-bladed screwdriver to gently lever the base off of the body. I don't want to break anything else at this stage. There, it's off. Now I can give this a closer inspection and see what I'm up against. Wow, that axle is really rusted. I don't think I've got a chance in hell getting that out. 
Still, I'll give it my best shot. Stranger things have happened. When I removed the base, this small little black, what I call friction block, fell out. I'm going to have to put that back in. It slides between the rails of the chassis here. Wow, I thought I gave this a good wash. Obviously not. Now the base is off, all this extra mud has suddenly appeared from in the cabin. It must have been forced in there through the windows over the years. I want to try and get this uh, transparency out so I can see how bad it is. But it doesn't seem to want to budge. I have a bit of a clean up here. Look at that, I've got quite the pile of dirt there. To begin with, I tried to tease the windscreen out using this flat bladed screwdriver, but I'm mindful that if I put too much pressure on it, it could crack. So I go back into the bathroom and I rinse it out to try and lubricate the windscreen to make it easier to fall out. Also to wash away any excess soil that might still be in there. But at the moment, this tipper tray has given me grief because it's just in the way. So I thought I might take this off at this stage until I continue. To get this pin out, I just use these long nose pliers to pinch the end. So the burr is uh, squashed flat and then the pin just basically fell out in this instance, which was good. I mustn't lose that and I'll have to give it a clean later. That's going back in at the end. So I'll set the uh, tray over there for now. Now, where was I? That's right, I'm getting this windscreen out. Let's try hitting it on the table a few times. Maybe the shock will dislodge it. There it goes off the table, nearly. Luckily, I managed to retrieve it. Wow, it is really mucky. It actually looks like it's got green slime in there, even though it's been washed three times already. So this is gonna need some special TLC to make it looking nice. Right, now the windscreen's out, I'll set that aside, and now it's time to remove those axles. I've determined that the only way to get them out is to cut them off. So I'm using this cutting disc in my Dremel at high speed, and I'm going, trying to cut them off as carefully as possible so that I don't damage anything else on the model. I have to cut the axle on the outside of the chassis rail and also on the inside of the chassis rail. I'm hoping when these parts are removed, I'll be able to drift out what's left using a small pin punch or a nail and a small hammer. After I've cut the ends of the axles off, I now have to file the stubs flat so I've got something to hit with the punch when it comes to trying to drift them out. I also tidy up the inside of the axle where the Dremel nicked the model slightly. So I've done the rear axles, now I'm looking at the front one. It's pretty solid in there. So I'm going to fill up the little bay in the centre with some WD-40 and let it soak for an hour or so. And hopefully it might loosen things up. Regardless of what happens, I'm going to have to throw this axle in the bin and make a new one. Having attempted to drift out the leftover stub of the axle and failing, I've decided another approach, which is to try and drill it out using a very fine drill. Now, it worked to a degree, but it wasn't very good as the drill would not sit central. And basically, although the end of the axle is been, has been removed, I'm left with some rather ragged looking axle supports to work with. Now back to the front wheels. This has been soaking for about an hour. I'm gonna see if it's freed up this axle at all. Uh, I'm not too hopeful. But what do you know? It's actually turning. Probably the first time in the last 40 years. And it came out pretty easy too. I can't reuse it, but it's great because the holes are still in good condition. Now it's time for the boring bit that's in all of my videos, the paint stripping. Once again, I'm holding the model with these uh, surgical 
Hemostats, I think one of my subscribers told me they're called. I thought they were forceps. That way you don't get any paint strip on your fingers, which is great. There's not a lot of paint on here anyway, so I'm thinking this is going to be a five minute job. I used my poly stripper paint stripper for this and this pink toothbrush to remove the old paint. When I'm scrubbing the old paint off, I do it in a bath of uh, lukewarm soapy water and that neutralizes all the uh, paint stripping gel as well. So it's a, it's a good thing to do. Sometimes I have to do this maybe two or three times. This one I was quite lucky. I had to do it only one and a half times. After I've removed the paint, I now use this wire wheel and my Dremel to try and remove some of the imperfections from this model. The oxidization has quite badly pitted this model all over and I'm hoping that hitting it with the wire wheel and some emery paper and wire wool I can get it looking a little bit better. Just a word of caution if you're going to be using these rotary brushes. The fibres, the wires on them, are quite often fly off and I highly recommend if you're using them to wear eye protection. Despite my best efforts, uh, at the end of the day this still looks like a high school kid with acne and there's not a lot I can do with it save body filling the entire model which is uh, totally impractical. In an attempt to disguise the poor condition of this model I give it a rather heavy coat of normal automotive undercoat rather than the Tamiya fine spray that I usually use. Before I do any further work on this body I just thought I would look at some of the details on it. There's a couple of air horns on the front there there's some headlights on the front, there's uh, some little shock absorbers or hydraulic rams on the sides. There's a ladder on each side but unfortunately this side some of it is broken off so I'm going to have to try and fix that. Here's these awful looking uh, axle supports. I'm going to fix those now with some JB Weld. For those who don't know JB Weld is a two-part epoxy and it is reinforced with metal filings. It's extremely strong when it dries and it can be drilled or filed or both. When you mix it up you use 50% of each product. Here I'm using some paper tape, just some masking tape and a wooden stirrer to make a background onto which I can place the material that I'm going to use to try to replicate the missing ladder parts. I'm only putting on as much product as is needed. I don't want excessive amounts because I've only got to file and grind it away at the end of the day. So using a toothpick here I'm just being very gentle and just building it up one little bit at a time until I'm happy with that. Now for the rear axle supports, I'm placing a blob on both sides and compressing it into the hole that I drilled and trying to neaten up the whole thing. When it's dry or when it's set I'll be filing it so it looks nice and then re-drilling the holes in the axle supports again, only this time I should be drilling through the JB weld. The thick automotive undercoat didn't do as good a job as I had anticipated in concealing the pitting on the model. So here it seems a little bit excessive on the front of the tipper body here. So I'm using some model putty just to fill the voids here and uh, I shall be respraying it again. Only because this part of the model is quite visible when you look at it after it's put back together again. After it's set, I just make myself a little sanding pad by tearing off some emery paper. And then very gently, not going too far, I sand down the filler very lightly until it's as smooth as I can get it. Here I'm just removing any loose dust. I'm feeling it with my finger, that feels good. 
and this is ready for repainting. Right, 24 hours has passed since I put this JB Weld product on the model. It's gone off really hard, which is good. These are ready for sanding at the back here and drilling. At the front here, I struggle to get the paper tape off, but I get there in the end. And I'm, I'm very pleasantly surprised that I'm left with a workable panel that I can now construct a new ladder out of. It's quite solid. Just need to cut it to size, file it down, sand it, shape it, and hopefully it will be good to go. I'm using the magnifier here so I don't go too deep. Helps me see to get it perfect, as perfect as I can. Once I've got the majority of the JB Weld off and shaped the area into the correct shape, I'm now drilling some holes in it, which I'm going to elongate using small files and that will make the rungs of the ladder. I'm going very carefully here. I'm letting the drill do its work. I'm not pushing on it too much. I don't want to break this panel off at this stage because that will set me back another day. Now I've got these tiny little hobby files but they're even struggling to get in the hole just to get it started. But eventually I do and I can start turning the round hole into a rectangular step. So now it's time to turn to the rear axle supports. So I make a little indentation with a craft knife. Then I drill a small pilot hole. Make sure it's in the center, that looks good. And when I'm happy, I enlarge the hole to the size of the axles, using a slightly larger drill, obviously. There's the finished ladder. Now here's a test fit of the rear axle that I'm going to use. And it is perfect. It's perfectly straight and it looks pretty good that way too. So now it's time to get into the spray booth and give the body an undercoat. I'm using the Tamiya undercoat this time. The uh, pitting on the body wasn't quite as bad as it was on the tipper tray, but nevertheless, I'm still giving it quite a thick coat. This is a recap of what the windscreen looked like when it came out. So I'm gonna clean that now with some hot soapy water and then polish it with some metal polish. This is what it looks like after it's been polished. Now, as you may remember, if, you've, if you're a regular viewer, I dip it now in some long life high shine floor polish and set it down and leave it to dry in a dust free environment. And at the end of the day, that windscreen is going to look brand new. Next, I'm going to refreshen the wheel hubs by giving them a light spray of Tamiya Clear Top Coat. The tyres I make look new with this tyre wash, which is made of thinned black paint. It's time to match the paint. I'm using Mr. Hobby Paints. I'm using orange, and red and I actually use a little bit of white as well towards the end because I realize as I go it's not exactly orange but more of a pinky orange I thin the paint with some Mr. Hobby thinners because of all the pitting on this model I'm giving it an extra thick coat again to try and disguise the damage that nature has done. I'm actually getting quite excited now because I can see there is some life left in this model. You can see I have an extraction fan at the rear of my homemade paint booth. It blows the fumes outside through the open window. After I paint the model, I attach it to these magnetic paintbrush holders to dry. I'm shining the axles now using emery paper and my battery drill and not forgetting the rear pivot pin. The spare tires that I found for this model are quite awkward to squeeze over the hubs because they're slightly undersized. So to make it a little bit easier, I dunk them in some boiling water to soften the rubber. They're still firm, but they end up clicking on quite nicely. These are going to look like new wheels when they're fitted.
Here I'm heating up some long nose pliers. I'm just going to squeeze that friction block to make it a slightly tighter fit. I think Matchbox called these hydro sleeves. Here are all the parts ready for assembly on display. Look how this windscreen turned out. It looks like new. I'm going to put that in first with a small blob of silicon. That way, if somebody chooses to remove it in the future, they can easily get it out without damaging it. You just need to use a small cocktail stick or matchstick and put a tiny blob in there, not too much so that it will squeegee you out when you put the windscreen in. Gently position the windscreen and make sure it's a snug fit. Look at that. That looks almost straight out the factory. Next up, I shall be fitting the axles and wheels back onto the model. Here I'm just doing a test fit to check that everything's all right. That seems okay. I'm going out to my shed now to reform the end of the axles. If you want to know how I do it, check out my other videos. I've placed that friction block back in also. You have to do that before you put the base on, otherwise you have to take the base off again to get it in. Now I'm manually positioning the base and securing it with a button headed screw that I showed you earlier. Seems to run smoothly too, which is always a good thing. Now lastly, I have to put on the tipper body. These can be quite awkward. You have to engage the tongue at the bottom into the friction block and also line up the hinge pin holes at the rear. Seeing as this is quite a plain looking model and some of the detail has been eroded away, I thought I would spruce it up by just highlighting the front headlights with a chrome pen and I am also going to do the ends of the axles. So here's a reminder of what we started with. This could have been my biggest failure or my best makeover ever. You decide because this is what it looks like now. Not too shabby, not the best thing in the world, but as my mother used to say, you can't make a silk purse from a sow's ear. I did my best with what I had available, and I hope you enjoyed the result. By the way, come and check this out. This is fantastic. The interior of this truck is so highly detailed it certainly makes up for the exterior looking so shabby. Okay, whilst I'm enjoying the view up here, I'd just like to say thank you all for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the show. So, see you next time on Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. Hi there, I'm back from England, back in Melbourne. <laughs> Hi there, I'm in Melbourne, back from England with my booty haul. Still, I can't stay here until... Hi, I'm back in Melbourne, after going to England and coming back with my booty haul. Anyway, I can't stay here talking, I've got some restoration to do, so follow me. Do this, like Ace Ventura. <laughs> Actually, yeah, do that like a little bit of like G-force, like you take it off. Okay. Yeah, so like your head's going back just a tiny bit.